All right, how now, Dow Jones? Stocks coming up just in one second. But first off, Defense Secretary Robert Gates, he unveiled a budget full of big changes in major weapons programs at the Pentagon. This is big news. CNBC's Hampton Pearson has the full story. Hampton. Hey, Larry, it's a $534 billion blueprint full of new priorities and a fundamental change in how the Pentagon plans to do business. For example, Northrop Grumman and Raytheon could gain from plans to buy 50 more of those Predator drones. The 2010 budget for the F-35 jet strike fighter is nearly doubled from $6.8 to $11.2 billion to buy 16 more planes. But Lockheed Martin will also see an end to F-22 production. First of all, we have fulfilled the program. I mean, it's not like we're killing the F-22. Uh, we will have 187 of them. Um, uh, that has, the 183 of that has been the program of record, as I recall, since 2005. So we are completing the F-22 program. The Army's future combat systems program will be restructured. National Missile Defense is also getting a makeover. Both were profitable Boeing contracts. A new presidential helicopter, designed and built by Lockheed Martin, is being scrapped. Work on General Dynamics made destroyers at a main shipyard is being phased out, while production of another model at Northrop Grumman Shipyard in Mississippi will be increased. There is broad agreement on the need for acquisition and contracting reform in the Department of Defense. There have been enough studies, enough hand-wringing, enough rhetoric. Now is the time for action. Make no mistake about it, Congress and the White House will have the last word. Look for lawmakers to go to war to protect their pet projects and all those jobs back in their home districts. Larry? All right, Hampton, thanks very much. Now we're back with Robert Dole, Art Hogan, and Peter Schiff. Art, it's interesting, Hampton's report. First of all, I trust Secretary Gates. He's worked for Republicans and Democrats. I think he's a man of great judgment, strong national security for this country. Now, his restructuring today led to a big, almost 4% gain in uh, defense stocks. Northrop Grumman up 9%, Lockheed Martin 9%, Raytheon 8%, General Dynamics 7%. What do you make of it, Art? Two things. I think the important thing is we've actually got a defense department that's planning their budget around the next war, not the last war. We're making some very prudent choices and cutting programs that we don't need anymore. That's not something we historically have done very well. The second thing is the, the stocks reacted the way they should because there were no major surprises of the cuts or of the transitions. Everything was pretty well telegraphed and expected. You know, for a, for a, for a communique that wasn't leaked and wasn't out there, the market had got it pretty right, and I think that's why they bought the stocks today. I think they'll continue to do so because there wasn't any major cuts that we weren't planning on, and they all make a good deal of sense. And I think there's some buzz around some consolidation in the space, too. There's a lot of people t looking at Textron as a possible takeover candidate. I think that's also very positive. Textron, consolidation. Robert Dole, what do you think about that? Not necessarily Textron alone, but as a general theme for the stock market, with easy money and low interest rates and some kind of economic recovery, are you looking for mergers, acquisitions, consolidations, and so forth? Yes, yes, and yes, Larry. I think as uh, corporate CEOs look at the top line in a slow-growth world, they will struggle to grow, and therefore they'll look at the company down the street. Can we get together and have a stronger growth rate? We've seen it in pharmaceuticals already. My guess we'll see more in healthcare, more in uh, technology. We'll see it in the energy space. Uh, I think uh, as the dust settles and confidence continues to rise, we'll have a lot more M&A. If you see that kind of action, is it just generally bullish? It has to be. Um, I, I would think it's an incremental buyer of common stocks that uh, wasn't there yesterday. And, as and it were. I'm going to assume, I want to ask you this, would this sort of consolidation, which will require some mergers and acquisitions, will it be leveraged heavily or not? I mean, that's a leading question, but I ask it because I'm hearing some people say, oh, no, gosh, don't go in more borrowing to buy this stuff. What's your take on the leverage aspect? Or might they buy it for cash and stock alone? I think it'll mostly be cash and stock. I think leverage is a four-letter word for the time being. You will get the mergers for strategic purposes with industry as opposed to financial buyers. Peter Schiff, would you buy defense stocks right now? Look, you know, I, I'm not a big buyer of defense stocks, and I, I certainly don't think that spending more money on defense in this country is something that's going to help the economy. You know, spending money on defense, diverse resources that we need for civilian purposes. I'd much rather see uh, investment uh, in, 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 in consumer manufacturing uh, than making more weapons. Of course, but, Peter, uh, if we don't have an adequate national defense, um, some people may deny this in Washington these days yeah, in the White look, House, uh, but there are still terrorists out there no, that we want to nail us. I'm not so saying we don't we have don't... national defense. It's going to yeah. be hard to maintain it. 
to strong not, domestic economy. I'm not saying we don't need to spend defense, uh, national defense. I'm just saying that spending more money on defense is not going to help the economy. It's, it's something that maybe we have to do. It might be something that's unfortunate that we have to do, but we're not going to get rich uh, spending money on defense. There's other things that we really need resources for. To the extent that we have to utilize those resources for national defense is a drain on the economy. Art Hogan, who's right and who's wrong? Mike Mayo, distinguished bank analyst, out this morning with a report. Our Charlie Gasparino uh, got it to everybody here at CNBC. <laughs> he says, stay away from banks. They haven't made the markdowns except 2%, 98% right. not marked down. Looks bad. On the other hand, Meredith Whitney, another distinguished bank analyst, was on the network this afternoon. I think it was Maria. She said, don't short the bank stocks. I had Frank Sorrentino, a real-life community banker from New Jersey, who I might say is not TARP. He said banks are making money because you can borrow at zero and loan at five or six percent. So who's right and who's wrong? Mayo, Whitney, who? Well, I would tell you, and I think that I think your last guest brought up a very good point. If you're a bank that doesn't have bad assets in your balance sheet, it's a great environment to make money. And we've heard from several banks that, are, that have told us the first quarter is going to look pretty good. They are actually borrowing at very low cost and they're, and they're, and they're lending at very high cost. The, the difference in the two stories is who can actually get these toxic assets in the right place and mark to the right level. And I think we're getting great work done on both of those fronts. If I had to lean in one direction, I'm going to lean in Meredith and Whitney's direction. Would you be buying banks no. and or financials right now? No. It's a very difficult time to be buying them. It's a trade. It's not something you're going to own. It's going to be a long time before they completely repair themselves. But as a trade into the quarter, yeah, I'd buy them. Bob Dole, does the bank and financial story have any clarity yet? No, I think there are a lot of unknowns. Uh, the income statements are getting better, as everybody's pointed out. The balance sheet's still the issue. We don't understand all those assets. We'll take time uh, to get them right. More capital is going to be needed some places without question. Some of the early reporting earnings are going to be big banks, if I'm not mistaken. Citigroup and uh, Bank of America don't may surprise fooled. on the upside. Go ahead. Yes, the, the income statements will look uh, generally okay. It's the write downs that come along with the bad assets. Peter, don't, I take it you disagree. No, don't be fooled by the earnings and don't go into business with the government. It's not going to work out. And, you know, interest rates are low now. They're going to go up. They're going to go a lot higher, and it's going to crush the bank earnings that are solvent now. Just stay away from this entire sector. There are much better places to invest. I think you're right about don't go into business with the government. That part I like. Peter, what's your favorite investment real quick? <laughs> Well, I like foreign stocks. I mean, they're trading really well, and I still like gold. This is a great dip to buy gold because it is inflation that's driving this growth story, and, and right. people will buy gold. All right, thank you. We're going to leave it there. Robert Dole, Art Hogan, Peter Schiff, very interesting gentleman. Coming up, Tim Geithner. He's cracking down on mortgage rescue scams, and CEOs are feeling some pain in their paychecks. We're going to report on all of this. Kudlow reports. Stay with us.